This is the Fox 25 News at 9. In tonight's big story breakdown, we're digging into government spending. This comes amid a massive shakeup in spending at one state agency after Fox 25 started asking questions. We found tens of millions of your tax dollars each year flowing through one local ad agency. Fox 25 uncovered the invoices to see just how much you're paying to promote tourism and what happens next. Our state is one of the most beautiful and unique states in the USA. Tourism is big business in Oklahoma, the state's third largest industry, contributing over $10 billion a year to our economy. And to get those visitors, slick promotions and pricey ad campaigns paid for by you, all handled through third-party vendors. Our investigation revealed over $30 million of your money flowing directly through VI marketing over just the last four years. The monthly retainer, $125,000 a month, or one and a half million dollars a year, but ultimately you paid much more. Our open records request found nearly 3,000 invoices in just shy of four years. We asked for and so far have not been provided documentation of exactly where the money went. The total that you paid through VI marketing, just over $30 million since 2020. Founded by CEO Tim Burney, VI has been doing work with the Department of Tourism for nearly a decade. This current contract we found is a five-year agreement with indefinite delivery and indefinite quantity. Each invoice was signed off by former tourism director Jerry Winchester until he resigned in 2022 amid a scandal involving restaurants and state parks. Then Shelley Zumwalt until she stepped down in October, months after a critical report by the state auditor. We reached out multiple times to find out if the agency is still paying VI. An email response asks where we got our $30 million figure. We also called interim executive director Sterling Zierley to ask him exactly how this money is being spent by VI. Hi, is this Sterling? We've been trying to get in touch with you. Is this a good time? Now, every week, Oklahoma Tourism joins us to spotlight a place you can road trip to for the upcoming weekend. Tourism officials were even in our studios appearing on Living Oklahoma. They declined an interview after. I mean, if we're spending this much money, don't taxpayers deserve to know where it's going and why? We'll be sending a statement. That statement came hours later saying they're ending their contract with VI. The statement says in part, after conducting a thorough review of marketing expenditures authorized by OTRD's previous leadership, the department determined the best interest of the agency and Oklahoma taxpayers would be served by ending the contract as the agency evaluates its marketing needs moving forward. Now we've posted the full statement online. VI marketing wasn't just getting millions from the Department of Tourism. The agency gets more than 20 million more each year from Oklahoma's TSET program and the Highway Safety Office. We have filed open records requests to get more details on just how much VI is pocketing from Oklahoma. And one of the bigger cases we've seen that raised concerns about state spending was the Swadley's Foggy Bottom Kitchen scandal. Now, in April of 2022, we learned that restaurants at six state parks were forced to close. The Oklahoma Tourism and Recreation Department announced on April 25th they, quote, canceled the lease concession with Swadley's due to suspected fraudulent activity and questionable business practices. Now, here at Fox 25, we dug into this and discovered millions of dollars in questionable spending. We also found the state spent two years and $16 million on seven state park restaurants, one of which was never even built. Now, days after that initial announcement, Fox 25 learned from the state fire marshal, and you can see that report right here. The Swadley's never obtained building permits for any of its foggy bottom restaurants. In fact, it says right down here at the bottom, no permits have been applied for. They didn't submit plans on this restaurant or any other restaurants recently opened at state parks owned by the state of Oklahoma. Now, after an inspection, the fire marshals reported and noted numerous life saving issues with the buildings. They got the uh, cart way ahead of the horse. So there was a lot of work to be done as, as far as the permitting goes. And to add to that, we were dealing with not only the restaurant owner or operator rather, but the state parks actually owns the building. Now, according to an open records request, again, Swadley's invoice, the state in for the thousands for building permits. You fast forward to February of this year on the 5th, Swadley's legal team filed a motion claiming the Department of Tourism owed Swadley's FBK around $1.2 million in billed and unpaid invoices, plus another $1.2 million unpaid contractually required operational loss reimbursements. Just three days later, 
The attorney general announced three people were indicted in the Swadley's Foggy Bottom kitchen contract scandal by a multi-county grand jury. The owner of the Swadley's chain, Robert Brett Swadley, Cumber's former vice president, Curtis Brooklander, and executive Timothy Hooper, all charged with conspiracy to defraud the state and five felony counts of presenting false claims against the state. Prosecutors claim Swadley's Foggy Bottom Kitchen presented false invoices to the Department of Tourism for payment of public funds to help renovate the restaurants inside state parks. On February 13th, Swadley and Hooper turned themselves in, were booked in the Oklahoma County Detention Center, while reports show Brooklander turned himself in at a different jail. All three men sent sent are not guilty pleas. They're due in court in March. And in October, Swadley released a letter to Oklahomans saying he stands by the Swadley's Foggy Bottom Kitchen work. The battle continues over whether the state should allow public dollars to be used for a religious charter school. Today, the Oklahoma Attorney General asked the U.S. Supreme Court to let an earlier ruling against such a proposal to stay in place. Fox 25's Tom Ferguson joins us live from the AG's office now. Tom, this is just an update in what's been an ongoing court battle, right? Wendy, that's correct. The AG here just laid out his arguments before the nation's highest court against what could be the first religious charter school in the United States. As advocates want the U.S. Supreme Court to intervene, the Oklahoma Attorney General is asking the justices to stay out of it. They're free to practice. They're free to worship as they choose but they're also not required to pay for other people's religions to be proselytized. We've been following the ongoing legal drama around the St. Isidore of Seville Catholic Virtual School since the first lawsuit against it was filed in the summer of 2023. Here's a breakdown of the main arguments the Oklahoma Attorney General is making to the U.S. Supreme Court now. Gittner Drummond says the school violates two sections of the Oklahoma Constitution, separate and apart from any First Amendment issues. Second, he says the state Supreme Court, which ruled against the school in August, is in alignment with previous circuit court decisions on whether charter schools should be considered state actors. Third, he said the issue is so new that it'd be better for the U.S. Supreme Court not to weigh in right now. Related to that point, he added that St. Isidore's place in the law would be specific to Oklahoma as other states have different laws for regulating charter schools. And lastly, Drummond said the Oklahoma Supreme Court was correct in ruling against the school. Attorneys and advocates have been debating that very question as charter schools are publicly funded but independently managed. If a state gives a benefit to an organization generally, it cannot deny it to a religious organization simply because they're religious. Today, the Oklahoma Parent Legislative Advocacy Coalition shared in a statement, quote, we agree with General Drummond's brief and are grateful for leaders who truly stand for religious liberty for all Oklahomans. We also reached out to the head of the Catholic Conference of Oklahoma, who's been a vocal supporter of the school. He told us he was unavailable, but that he'd be praying for the U.S. Supreme Court to take up the case. Live in Oklahoma City, Tom Ferguson, Fox 25 News. All right, Tom, thank you. And that was your big story breakdown. You can find the Attorney General's full filing and those tourism contracts on OKCFox.com.